In this episode of Skullnamara, I am actually at the river. I thought it'd be really fun to bring my canoe. I'm going to paddle down the river and hopefully go the whole way down as far as the sea. Before I get in my canoe, I'm going to actually check out what I might find on the bed of the river. I have my net with me and what I want to do is do a little kick sample to see what I can find on the bed of the river or on the benthos. And so what I'll do is I'll put the net in the water close to the riverbed and then I'll kick upstream of where the net is. I'll, I'll kick the bottom just to disturb the bottom, to disturb the stones and the gravel on the bottom. And some of the material, some of the little critters and other material that's on the bed of the river will flow into my net. So I want to have a look at what I, what I might find when I do this kick sample. So I've got some material in, in the net here now and there are lots of bits of leaves and small twigs, um, little pieces of bark and lots of material off, off the trees and the vegetation around the river. But also in here there are some of these tube kind of casings and these are the casings they they all seem to be empty they're the casings of the caddisfly larvae so caddisflies have different stages to their life or to their life cycle so they start off as eggs and then they form into larvae and a lot of these larvae will make these casings to protect themselves on the bed of the on the bed of the river and after after they've been larvae for a while they'll turn into pupae and then eventually they'll turn into the adult insect that flies but it's really interesting to look at these casings they're made from different materials so different species will make a different type of casing and they use different uh, different types of materials some of them will use little tiny little pebbles others others will be kind of more made of sand and then others have kind of pieces of bark even in them and bits of leaves and caddisfly larvae will make these using a silk so they secrete this silk like substance from glands near their mouths and this is how they stick the material together to make the casing and so you know we we see different animals quite often we see predators who that eat on other smaller animals and the smaller animals that they feed on are called their prey. So the caddisfly is a prey for, for a lot of bigger animals. And the casing is thought to be a way that it can protect itself so that it can avoid being eaten. And you can even see when it's mixed in with the other bits of, um, of bark and uh, little pieces of twigs and leaves, um, that it blends in very well. And it kind of looks like a little, a little twig, but in actual fact, it's a two casing and there's a larva inside. So each one of these is a caddisfly larva casing. So larva is when you're talking about one and then when you're talking about more than one you say larvae. And what I really love is when you kind of tap a couple of them together you can really hear the sound of the of the stones or the pebbles on the outside. So even though they look like little pieces of twigs um, they're actually like these little stone tubes to protect the caddisfly larva. I stopped here, there's, there's a kind of a flat sort of still patch in the river and there's some pond skaters uh, just floating around on top. They're really, really cool because it's like they're walking on water. They're, they're these insects and so they have three pairs of legs and the, 
they managed to literally stand on the water because they spread their weight out you'll notice especially their back legs are kind of bent so it's almost like they're spreading their weight over their legs rather than standing on their feet and when they balance on the water like this it's almost like the water molecules form a skin on the top of the water and you can see sort of like a little bubble or a little spot where where their legs are dipping into the water but they're not breaking through the surface so they're really really cool to watch and they're quite good uh, swimmers or skaters along the water they they use their legs to kind of propel themselves against the current or to to move along the top of the water Part of the reason that they can manage to stand on the water like this is because they've got these tiny microscopic hairs on their legs and the hairs trap air around them. So it helps them to sort of balance on the water and not, and not pierce through the water and sink. So they also need to be able to support their body weight and the bigger, bigger pond skaters um, will probably sink because they won't be able to balance on top of the, the film of water. So they'll skate along the top of the water and they'll use their front uh, legs to, to catch prey and then they've got these really sharp um, mouth parts that they'll use to kill smaller insects. So they're a type of predator and they'll feed on smaller insects that they find floating on the current against them um, as they're facing up the river. So keep an eye out for them, especially on kind of flatter parts of the river. You won't find them in the kind of fast flowing um bumpy water in the middle but on ponds or flatter parts of the water you'll see them on on the surface and they're really really cool to watch this spot earlier in the canoe and I spotted a bird called a dipper feeding over on the on the bed of the river over there so I wanted to come back and see if I could spot it again because dippers are quite territorial and they'll usually you'll usually see them in the same place over and over again and they are a really beautiful bird I think my favorite thing about them is their color they've got this beautiful rich brown um, feathers and a contrasting white throat and belly and they're a really really unusual bird because they're a songbird but they are aquatic and that means that they depend on the water they need to be by the water so they feed in the river and they like fast flowing water where they can um, walk through the water they've got really really strong feet so that they can cling to the rocks and they'll walk around, they'll duck their heads under the water searching for food and they'll turn stones over. And what they're looking for are macroinvertebrates, so things like uh, different types of fly or um, larvae or maybe uh, small freshwater shrimp. And they're really fascinating because they, they're a plump bird. Um, they're quite round and plump and they've got short broad wings that they use they can use underwater it's almost like their wings help them to swim so they can go a little distance underwater and they can with their strong feet and with those wings they can spend a lot of time in the shallow water even where the current is quite strong looking for food another amazing thing about their their colors is that if you get to see them blink you'll see that they've got a white eyelid and it's really cool. Um, it looks really unusual because it's when they blink, you see this little flash of white. And their eyelids are actually uh, covered in feathers. But they also have um, kind of like a second set of eyelids that they use when they're underwater to help them to see. So they can um, use this uh, second eyelid to kind of clear any, any grit off, off their eyes. So they're really well adapted to living in the rivers and to feeding in the rivers. The name, the dipper, um, the reason they have, have this name is because they just do this really cool kind of bobbing movement. Um, so you'll see them standing on the rocks and they'll bob up and down, almost like they're bending, bending their legs. And it's thought that this might be a signal. So it's 
it's a way for them to mark their territory. So they do this bobbing movement um, as a way to tell other birds that this is their territory. So they're a really beautiful and unusual bird, an aqu aquatic songbird. Um, and they nest under bridges, so they spend all of their lives really cl close to the water and depending on the riverways and clean waterways for their food and for nesting. Scientists who study the environment can tell a lot about the environment and about the health of the environment and how clean the water is by looking at dipper population. Dippers are known as an indicator species and they're really affected if the quality of the water is poor or if it's becoming more polluted. And this is because they depend on those smaller species living in the water for their food. And if the quality of the water decreases, if it gets dirty or polluted, um, then there won't be as much food for them to eat. And unfortunately in Ireland, um, the numbers of dippers are decreasing and this would suggest that the quality of the water isn't as clean as it should be. So the health of the environment and the health of the, the, the aquatic environment that the dipper lives in isn't as good as it could be. So it's a reminder of how important it is to protect the water that's flowing into our rivers and to make sure that any sort of pollution or runoff is prevented so that we can maintain a clean environment for species like the Dipper.